story recapped here. Today, I'm gonna explain a horror movie called Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. Many centuries ago, in a secret tomb in ancient Egypt, a cabal of priests buried an evil Egyptian queen named Terra. The queen, however, is not dead, but immobilized. As part of the ritual, the priests chop her hand off and throw it outside to be devoured by the jackals. However, before the jackals could eat it, they fall to the ground with their throats ripped open, while the queen's hand, wearing a giant ruby ring, crawls away. Meanwhile, the priests have already placed a lid on Terra's golden coffin, and they soon leave the tomb, only to get caught in a heavy sandstorm right after. Horrifyingly, the sandstorm kills all of them, leaving their throats ripped with blood gushing out of it. This scene has been a recurring nightmare for Margaret, the daughter of a famous Egyptologist, Professor Julian Fuchs. One night, she sees the same dream again and screams as she wakes up. This alerts her father, who later on comforts her and tucks her back to bed. Little do they know that in a neighboring house, a suspicious man named Corbeck is observing them through his window. The next morning, the professor gives Margaret a beautiful ring with a huge ruby on it as an early birthday present. He puts it on her finger and tells her to wear it always. Not long after, Margaret leaves to meet her boyfriend, Todd Browning, who is waiting outside her house. Once again, Corbeck stands by his window and observes Margaret as she drives off with Todd. Soon afterward, Margaret arrives at Todd's house, and he notices the huge ring on his lover's finger. He is quite amazed by it and requests to look at it more closely. Todd reckons that Professor Fuchs got it from his expedition, and he finds it strange since it's the first time the old man ever gave anything away from the said event. With plenty of questions in his mind, Todd initiates to visit a friend that might know something about the ring's origin. Meanwhile, Corbeck decides to visit an old colleague in a nearby mental hospital. The patient's name is Berrigan, and he happens to hold an ancient relic that Corbeck desires. As Corbeck enters his old friend's room, he immediately tries to look for the relic and soon realizes it might be inside the wardrobe. Berrigan, who has now caught up with Corbeck's sly objective, guards the relic by attacking him. Right away, the attendants restrain Berrigan and tell Corbeck to leave the room at once. Meanwhile, Todd and Margaret meet up with expert Joffrey Dandridge, who immediately panics upon seeing the ring. With a quivering voice, he asks who owns it, and Margaret steps accordingly to say that it's hers. As soon as he lays his eyes on her, he trembles in fear and soon triggers a panic attack. Suddenly, a peculiar constellation shows up in the ring, which also appears on the crystal ball of Helen Dickerson, a fortune teller. Dickerson is incredibly alarmed by this vision that she tells her customer to leave at once. Meanwhile, after witnessing Joffrey's panic attack, Margaret and Todd decide that they should probably go. Later that day, Joffrey finally calms down and soon sends his assistant home. When the coast is clear, he immediately heads over to his cupboard and takes out a box containing a jackal's skull. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and Corbeck enters the room. Immediately, Joffrey explains that he found the ring and the woman who must not be named. He is very baffled about his discovery, but Corbeck, on the other hand, seems unfazed. He then explains to Joffrey that the woman is Margaret Fuchs, daughter of Professor Fuchs, and in a few hours, she is about to have her birthday. Upon hearing this information, the look of worry is apparent on Joffrey's face. That night, Margaret lies with Todd, whom she just made love with. However, in the middle of her sleep, she dreams of Terra, introducing herself as the Queen of Darkness and Priestess of Ancient Egypt. Throughout the centuries, the Queen's spirit never rested, and her soul has wandered wandered upon the stars in the universe while her mortal body waits. She warns that her time is drawing near, and also explains how she faithfully guided people to find her tomb, whom she appointed as guardians of her relics. Later on, a flashback of the tomb's discovery is unraveled. A long time ago, Professor Fuchs, Joffrey, Corbeck, Berrigan, and Helen Dickerson discovered the tomb of Queen Terra. Upon their entry, they face a stone door, and the professor reads the inscriptions on it, and learns that the person who lies in the tomb shall have no name and shall cease to exist in the minds of man. Shortly after, they find the queen's golden coffin and see that there are other precious artifacts with her, including a cobra snake, the skull of a jackal, and a cat. Curious, the explorers open the coffin and are soon astounded upon seeing the queen's perfectly preserved state. Dickerson also finds the queen's severed hand, the ruby ring attached to it. Professor Fuchs takes the ring off and reads the symbols carved onto it, identifying the queen as Terra. At the moment of the expedition, Professor Fuchs' wife gives birth to a baby 
girl and later dies in labor. At first, the baby appears to be dead, just like the mother. But as the doctor places a stethoscope on the baby's chest, he hears a heartbeat, relieved to know that the little bundle of joy is alive. The baby is then named Margaret. Later on, Margaret wakes up from the dream and immediately dresses herself to head home. She senses that something is wrong, so she tells Todd that they must leave immediately. Back home, Professor Fuchs decides to go to his basement, where he created a replica of Queen Tara's tomb. A long time ago, he brought her body into his home, and now he wants to open the coffin to see the queen again. A few moments after, Margaret and Todd arrive, and they immediately sense an ominous energy surrounding the house. Suddenly, Professor Fuchs screams from the basement, and Todd immediately breaks down the door to rescue him. Upon arrival, they are horrified to see that the professor can barely breathe due to his bleeding neck. With his short breath, he tells Todd and Margaret to call Dr. Putnam, who later tells Margaret that the professor might remain unresponsive for a few days. Although she is filled with so many questions, Putnam says that he can't reveal much about the professor's discoveries, only that his work will astound the world of science. Afterward, Putnam makes his way home, and Margaret is left beside her father's bed, wondering what she should do. That night, Margaret goes to the basement to visit Queen Tara's body. As soon as she gazes upon Upon the queen, she realizes how much resemblance they have, and it isn't long until she gets captivated by the sight of Tara's beauty. However, she snaps back into her senses when the light suddenly turns on, and Corbeck appears. Corbeck tells her not to be afraid because he is a friend of her father. Needless to say, Margaret knows that he is Professor Fuchs' long rival, and that he may never be allowed in their home. But Margaret, being ignorant about everything that's going on, gives Corbeck a chance as he explains the meaning of the ruby ring. He reveals that it is a symbol of the god to come. He also tells Margaret about how Terra, the Queen of Darkness, has obsessed her father into finding the truth and making his mark in the world of Egyptology. With this vision in mind, Professor Fuchs assembled a team of explorers. Corbeck then turns to Margaret and tells her how it was fated that she was born at the exact moment her father first looked at the Queen. She was born in Terra's image, who had astral powers that they must understand before it turns on them. For this reason, Corbeck tells Margaret and Todd to reassemble the team of explorers that discovered Terra's tomb, so that they may help the Queen re night with her soul. Todd immediately calls Joffrey over the telephone, but his old friend drops the call because he refuses to associate himself with the evil queen. Because of this, Margaret and Todd resort to visiting Berrigan instead. A few hours later, they arrive at the mental hospital, and they ask the doctor who Berrigan used to be. However, the doctor doesn't know much about his patient, and he only knows that he buries himself in his readings like he's running out of time. A few moments after, they enter Berrigan's cell, and right away, the old man is frightened upon seeing Margaret. Margaret realizes that he thinks she's the evil queen, so she takes the role and pretends to be her. She asks for her familiar, the snake, but the old man denies that he has it. For this matter, Margaret scares him with her ruby ring, which causes him to break down in fear. The attendants notice the whole ruckus, so they restrain Berrigan and ask for Margaret and Todd to leave. Back at home, Dr. Putnam visits to check on Professor Fuchs, and later informs Margaret he might have paralysis on one side of his body. The doctor doesn't stay for long, and Margaret later joins Todd, who is down in the basement browsing through the professor's journals. He believes that Margaret's birth and the discovery of Tara's tomb are no mere coincidence, but a matter of unity. Tara created this unity, and she achieved dominance in her sleep as she waited for her abstract metaphysical state. Todd adds that the queen is neither alive nor dead, but is only waiting until everything falls into place. Back in the mental hospital, the attendants mock and threaten Berrigan so he would stop making a fuss. They scare him with a snake artifact and soon place it on the table where he can see it when they leave. Finally, alone, Berrigan squirms in his straitjacket but soon lies still to observe his surroundings. All of a sudden, the snake disappears from the table, and he starts seeing its shadow lurking on the walls. A few moments after, the window horrifyingly bursts open, allowing a strong gush of wind to shake up the whole room. But the old man can only tremble and scream because he is unable to escape. Suddenly, the wind stops, and Berrigan lies dead on the floor with his throat ripped open. The next day, the professor finally wakes up, and Margaret immediately asks him if he gave her the ruby ring for protection. As much as he wants to keep everything from Margaret, he reveals that the priests of Terra's time cut her hand off because they believe that if the queen's body is incomplete, then her powers will be destroyed as well. However, it's not that easy. So the professor gifted his daughter with a ring as a talisman. Later on, Margaret informs her father that Berrigan is dead, and the snake artifact mysteriously appeared in Terra's tomb downstairs. After finding out that she's been working with Corbeck, the professor warns her to stay away from him. However, Margaret is determined to find the answers to her questions and soon visits Corbeck's house. Margaret then asserts her dominance and claims that she's important in their affairs because she's born in the image and likeness of Terra. She is very interested in harnessing 
harnessing the powers of the evil queen, so she teams up with Corbeck to resurrect Terra. However, Corbeck tells her to exclude her father from their mission, because he is far too weak. With everything agreed upon, Margaret leaves to tend to other important matters. Meanwhile, Joffrey learns from his assistant that Berrigan is dead, and soon realizes that it might have something to do with the relics. For this reason, Joffrey takes out the one in his possession, which is the jackal's skull. Shortly after, he hears some footsteps and is horrified upon seeing Margaret. She asks for the artifact, but Joffrey refuses and exits through his window and down the fire exit. However, he drops the box containing the relic, and he can no longer find it. Suddenly, his blood runs cold after hearing the loud howl of a jackal from a distance. Meanwhile, Margaret exits Joffrey's office and runs into Todd, who is quite puzzled upon finding her there. However, Margaret doesn't tell him anything and quickly leaves. Later on, Todd enters Joffrey's office and hears a howling jackal from outside the window. Of course, he investigates the situation and soon finds Joffrey's corpse with a lacerated and bloody throat. Todd is horrified by this scene, but he soon carries his friend's body and shortly catches a glimpse of a jackal's shadow. Back at home, Margaret and Corbeck are delighted to see that the jackal's skull has made its way back to the tomb. Suddenly, Todd arrives and angrily tells them to stop all their plans. Margaret, however, is now consumed by the potential of Terra's powers and refuses to acknowledge that two people have already died. She argues that she's in the middle of something precious and fantastic. However, Todd begs to disagree and grabs her hand, forcing her to come with him. When Margaret refuses, he slaps her and decides to leave, saying that he will look for help. For this reason, Margaret is furious and screams for Todd to die. Not long after, Todd crashes his car into a tree and dies with his neck all torn up and bloody. Filled with guilt that she wished death upon the man that she loves, Margaret collapses to the ground. Later on, Professor Fuchs heads to the basement and is horrified upon seeing his daughter's situation. The professor wants to ask for help, but Corbeck argues that Margaret no longer exists, and it's only a matter of time until Terra is reborn. A few moments after, Corbeck leaves to acquire the last artifact. Shortly, Professor Fuchs brings her daughter to a room, and later tells Putnam to put her out with an injection. However, Putnam fails to complete his task when Margaret kills him. Upon seeing the doctor's lacerated throat, Margaret screams in horror and flees the house. Meanwhile, the professor finds Putnam's body, and Corbeck later helps him eliminate any evidence. Meanwhile, Margaret heads to Helen Dickerson's house and asks for the cat relic. Seeing that her worst nightmares have come true, Helen attempts to hit Margaret with a metal rod, but soon concedes after finding that she can be spared from death. However, after Margaret obtains the relic, she kills Helen with her willpower. Back at home, Professor Fuchs discovers that the cat relic has appeared in Terra's tomb. Not long after, Corbeck arrives with Margaret, who is very determined to summon the evil queen. Despite the professor's protest, Margaret argues that she is ready, so Corbeck commences the ritual and places the queen's severed hand back. He then reads the scroll of life to reunite Terra's soul to her sleeping body and resurrect her astral spirit. However, halfway through the ritual, Margaret falls weak and backs out of the plan. Realizing that her father is right, Corbeck must not finish reading the scroll. And so, with all the energy left in their bodies, they attack Corbeck and stab him to death. However, Terra is already awake, and so Margaret and her father wrestle the queen in hopes of killing her. Sad to say, the professor dies, and it's up to Margaret to make ends meet. Finally, she manages to stab the evil queen, but she passes out shortly after. Suddenly, the whole basement collapses, and they all get buried under a pile of heavy debris. A few days later, a woman wrapped in bandages wakes up in a hospital. The nurse says that she's the sole survivor of the accident, because everybody in that basement has been crushed beyond recognition. However, it is never clear if the woman behind the bandages is Margaret Fuchs or Queen Tara. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.